Yes, the Mirror is carrying this story today. Kia, I'll take on the far-right thugs. So this is after the Prime Minister met with police chiefs yesterday in Downing Street. He then announced his plan to form a national violent disorder unit to tackle rioting across the country and pledged to keep the streets safe. And in doing so, he condemned the people who'd rioted over the Southport stabbings. Let me now turn to the actions of a tiny, mindless minority in our society. Because in the aftermath of this attack, the community of Southport had to suffer twice. A gang of thugs got on trains and buses, went to a community that is not their own, a community grieving the most horrific tragedy, and then proceeded to throw bricks at police officers, police officers who just 24 hours earlier had been having to deal with an attack on children in their community. Well, it's reported that the new unit will allow the police to clamp down on violent groups by allowing forces to share intelligence. Do you think this is the right response, Nilifa? Have, have they, has he gone far enough? No, it hasn't gone far enough. 53 officers suffered injuries, including broken bones, uh, bruises, being pushed about. Three police dogs were injured. Um, these... And, and I, I, if one more person calls them demonstrators, I'm not saying we are, but they're being referred to as demonstrators, I might lose my mind. These are rioters, these are thugs, these are agitators, these are people who want nothing to do but to commit violence. And th the chants that they were shouting were disgraceful. They had nothing to do with what was happening uh, in Southport. I feel sorry for the community who have to see this and have to live with the memory of what's happened on their streets day in, day out. And one more thing. What's been it, what's been interesting and what oh I mean it's just it beggars belief watching these pictures I must say I, I find it really difficult to watch but as, aside from the violence that they committed against the police and the vandalism that they committed and the the hatred that they were spewing they were organised they were intentional in the spread of their malice and their hatred and this is what Keir Starmer is talking about so introducing facial recognition technology uh, kind of making sure that police units across the country are cooperating on this because when these people organize on social media they are vengeful they are a force to be reckoned with and the police must crack down on that level uh, of organization as I mean look at these pictures it looks like I know, it's horrific, it looks like some of the war zones I cover yeah. it really does yeah, I mean the police car on fire. That that was in that was in Hartlepool, I think. Yes. Um, oh, this is all Southport. Okay. Um, yeah, horrific scenes. Um, Christo, so do you think he's gone far enough? Does he need to do more than just sort of sharing intelligence using facial recognition? I mean, he hasn't passed any new legislation here. I think that what happened there is absolutely horrific. I don't want to live in a society where people who look different, you know, of, of different ethnicities just get attacked for walking along the street or people who are going about enjoying their religion by there being a mosque in the street, though that, that gets attacked. That is not a society that we should be living in. That is completely wrong. The issue I have is that while he is right to tackle that, what he hasn't done is, I believe, go for the symptom. What he's, what he's tackling here is the problem. Mm. What we have here, what, what, what this horrific attack, without going into too many details of the, the, the alleged perpetrator and the like, but what this attack has, has demonstrated is the anger that people feel. And th those riots from those awful individuals are, uh, are, are a symptom mm -hmm. of that anger. And that's where this problem has come from. So we need to be engaging with these thugs more, maybe? No, we need to be engaging need to with, be... I think, the anger... That, well, there's, there's two things. Firstly, I think that people feel that there's a double standard when it comes to the, the forceful policing and the forceful rhetoric from the government when it comes to certain riots. For instance, we saw uh, riots in Rochdale, we saw riots in Leeds. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any of the rhetoric, which I think leads to the accusation that there is a double standard. Oh, but, secondly, but secondly, um, people are angry at what they see as a failure of the authorities to keep them safe. Now, we have seen, unfortunately, in the past, and look, I don't consider myself anything other than centre-right, and I, again, I absolutely condemn those people. They're awful, awful people. But in the past, we have seen, when there has been a, a big attack on people, it has been as a result of a terror attack. And people immediately jumped to that conclusion when it came to this, wrongly. 
But it's because of the fact that, that people feel like they are unsafe and that those issues have not been addressed. That is what, by the mainstream, that is why people are then attracted to the only people that, are, that they feel are saying something about it, and that is the far right. Christo. So if you don't address that anger and that, that, that fear, unfortunately, things like this are going to keep happening. What kind of a person... Melissa, I know you're desperate to come back to that, but I do just want to bring somebody else in on this conversation. Um, let's bring in former police officer Mark Williams-Thomas. Um, Mark, you've actually had some first-hand experience of dealing with riots. Do you think the Prime Minister's plan has gone far enough? Yeah, I mean, the major problem here, the Prime Minister is fairly limited in terms of, of course, what he can do. He's called on uh, setting up a national violent disorder programme uh, and sharing intelligence. Well, police forces share intelligence now. The problem is, is police forces are utterly stretched. The reality is, is that neighbourhood policing, which would have a massive impact in reducing the amount of crime in communities, has gone. It's been gone for a very long time now. You don't see a police officer on the beat. And why that's useful and beneficial is because of they understand what the tension is within the community. There's a, a, an understanding of that. What we've got now is officers coming in from outside who don't police that yeah. area. So their relationship is very different. And of course, we've seen a, a lack of uniformity in the way that this is dealt with or riots are dealt with across the country. Uh, people will often say, well, hang on a minute, if this occurs in the metropolitan police area, they'll get a huge response. Well, they will do because there are tactical support teams on call out there 24 hours a day. Those aren't the same in rural police forces. They have to call upon uniform officers, get them into the right gear and then get them into the right van and get them out into the community. So there's a very slow deployment process in terms of this. This is a big issue that has been has been ongoing for a period of time. Tension has been increasing within communities because of no community policing. And of course, at this time of year, we see an increase in violent disorder on the streets because the weather is nicer. The best police officer there is, is bad weather. <laughs> so tell me how, you know, you mentioned there that already police share intelligence, that actually it's quite difficult to sort of move police about the country. How do you interpret this is going to be any different then than what, what Keir Starmer set up? Well, it won't. It won't make any difference at all. I mean, okay, the reality really is that they're trying to bring in facial recognition. Now, there's been a lot of criticism around facial recognition, particularly identifying black and, and ethnic women, not being able to pick them out so well. But in relation to facial recognition, that's been around for a number of years now, 2016, and Notting Hill Carnival was the first time it's used, and South Wales Police have used it quite proactively. Uh, they are, there's, a, there's no specific legislation in relation to that. In fact, there's lots of groups out there who are saying it's unlawfully used. Facial recognition definitely is an assist tool that the police service can use, but don't forget you've got to have the intelligence initially to be able to put that person on the watch list and then enable the facial recognition to use its coding to be able to identify that person is. This is all about intelligence, intelligence-led policing. Now, the only way you can do intelligence-led policing is by community policing. Community policing drives the intelligence, the intelligence then goes into police forces and then they act upon it. The fact that we've got rid of community policing, the fact that the police service now is very much reactive, almost in a fire station capacity, that is where the problem is. Of course, the Conservative Party wanted to increase massively police numbers, and they did that, detrimental to some degree, because as a result of that, they reduced the recruitment process, meaning unsuitable police officers to come in. This is unfortunately not a problem you can solve overnight. It's a long-term problem. But what we need to do in terms of policing, we need to increase policing numbers and we need to return to community policing. That will not only stop riots, but it will also have a massive impact in crime, um, uh, individuals who've, who are ideologised as far as terrorism. That is a massive area that we need to focus on. Community-based policing is what we need to get back to. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your insight, Mark. Right, after the break, we're taking your calls um, and we can speak to Valerie in Surrey on this. Valerie, what are your thoughts on the government's response so far? I don't think they could ever be too tough, to be quite honest with you, that they are just animals, the people that are doing that. Well, the, the people were murdered and then their homes are being abused and the people of the area. And on top of that... That they're supposed to put the trains on to take them home. Unfortunately, we need to build more prisons and not let criminals out early. Well, 
that is that is a problem that we're currently having to face at the moment, isn't it? Um, so how do you feel like Sakir came across during the press conference? Did you feel like he, the, the, what he's put together is tough enough or you want to see sort of new, new laws put in place? I'd like to see new laws. OK. Full stop. No, you, and I don't think you can cut down on them hard enough. OK. Thank you very much for your thoughts there, Valerie. Um, let's hear from Mick in Chester. Mick, what are your thoughts on how Keir's handling this? Uh, well, uh, good morning, panel. Uh, nice to speak to you. Um, Sir Keir Starmer, I mean, the police officer there was absolutely spot on. Police, Keir Starmer can stand in front of his lectern and talk, 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 talk. We haven't got the police to do it. That's the first thing. He's talking rubbish. We haven't got the police to do this. That police officer was spot on. We haven't got the police. And, and as for that lady, Valerie from Surrey, of course, OK, she sounded very posh and all the rest of it. She probably not been affected by some of the things that these people are complaining about. Firstly, I do not, I support the police fully. I wish there was thousands more of them, but there isn't. My concern and my main call up here is I've seen a riot in Leeds where the police withdrew. The commander said he withdrew to um, ease the situation. No, he withdrew because he didn't have the riot gear and he was scared. He was a coward. Simple as that. Wow. I thought then, you said you supported this, policemen. Sorry? Yeah, I thought you were saying you're in support of the policeman, but you're also calling I am, them yeah. cowards. That's a, that's, a policeman, that's a policeman on my screen now, not a commander. Don't get the two mixed up. I support the police on the ground. They're being let down by their commanders. If you give me a chance, I'll explain. It's the leadership of the police who are weak, not the police officers on the ground. They have got two-tier system in place because they're being told to by their commanders. Our chief constables are weak. They're too scared to deal with this equally and fairly. And, yes, yeah, sort it out. I'm not for one minute suggesting the police just stand there. Yeah, sort it out. Get it sorted. But do it to everybody. But they won't do it because the policemen on the ground are superb. I've got lots of friends in the police. They tell me the same thing. They are let down by their weak yellow, spineless commanders. OK. Right, Nick, we're going to move on from that. Um, Sarah from Liverpool, what are your thoughts on this, please? Uh, good morning, all. Uh, to, at first, on pe uh, at first hearing, it sounds great. But will it work? Mm, well, is that's what the questions were people, people were saying this morning. And the thing is, the thing is, if it works the same way the Football Intelligence Unit worked in the 80s and in the 90s, where they spotted the troublemakers you and they had intelligence on what they were up to and who they mixed with and everything else. That's fine. But now we've got the added dimension of social media and also these far-right groups. But surely with social moment. media, <laughs> surely with social media, it should be easier to track down who these people are. You know, they're le leaving a digital trace all over the internet. They're using these tools to, to be able to arrange this stuff. You know, it feels like we should actually be able to use that intelligence to find out what they're doing and where they're going. Hang on a minute. They can do that. That's the, easy, that's the easy bit. But these far-right groups have got connections with other far-right and football hooligan groups in Europe and across the world. Because they've got the, the likes of the Ultras and um, there's one in Russia, the Proud Boys in the States, whoever else they're in, they're in contact with. They're all connected up. It is one nasty little spider's web. And it's going to take more than just this riot reactive squad or whatever you mm. want to call it. Yeah, national so, violent disorder. Yeah, that's it. We're <laughs> also we've got to have police, community policing for a start. I mean, the police force have been gutted. It's not like it used to be in the 80s and 90s. Mm. Okay. That needs to be addressed. Make the community feel safe. On top of that, you've also got to have crack down on these far right. Let's call them what they are, eh? They're fascists. These fascist groups get intelligence on them. It's not just the police that need to be in on this. You need to have the likes of MI5 and with the added international dimension, Interpol, MI6. You also have to make sure you know what you're doing. And if Keir Starmer doesn't, and from the sound of it, he's only looking at this from mm. a very, very simplistic angle. He need, This is a damn sight more complex than what he, than he yeah. and the Cabinet think. Yeah. Sarah, thank you so much for your thoughts on it. You know, people feel really passionately about this. And, Christo, people are <laughs> agreeing with you that actually there needs to be sort of a, a more holistic approach when it comes and to this I, stuff. I, I agree, because I think that... In so many other crimes, when we look at things like knife crime, we say, right, you know, you can't just arrest your way out of it. You can't just clamp down on the legal side of things to stop that happening. Mm. We need to look at how have people got to the point where they are picking up 
knives? Um, what, what, what is the role of community policing? Why are our youth feeling like they're scared or angry? I'm asking for the same approach for this. You can absolutely clamp down on those horrific far-right people, but how have they got to this point where they have been radicalised into thinking that that is what they want to do and why, why they want to do it? And I think that just saying, look, we're going to clamp down on the rioting side of things, that's one little part. But you need community policing. You need to find out why people are so angry. You need to find out why people feel so scared. And you need to find out why that vacuum is being filled by those people who think that the far right is the way forward. Otherwise, we're not going to actually solve the problem. I mean, do you agree with that? Or do you think that that's not the way forward? Um, thank you. So a lot's been said, and I, and I agree with bits of it and kind of disagree with, 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 with a lot of what you're saying. Because what what... There's no way you can tell me that you saw what I saw on that screen and call that a, a way of giving voice to people who feel that they were underrepresented. You mentioned the Rotherham and the Rochdale attacks, and, and I think Mick mentioned the ones that were happening in Leeds. Um, and I agree that they must be dealt with evenly, but I remember the demonstrations um, and the vigil after the Sarah Everard murder and the police grabbing women by the head and smacking their head down on the floor, uh, arresting women for essentially what was a candlelight vigil and singing. Um, so it's, it's shocking to me that we are bundling all of this in the same way. Two things, number one, pretty much all of the men that we saw in those clips were not there because they were worried about Bebe by, uh, or El um, Elsie and Alice. They were not there holding placards saying more needs to be done to defend these young girls who were at a dance club. They were there chanting, oh, Tommy Robinson, we want our country back. Okay. So it's 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 really easy to kind of like lump people who are there because of a woman's murder with men who were chanting things like that. I think I don't care if Keir Starmer is effective or Final not effective. Final point, Nell effects. We do have to move to the break. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> that's all. That's that. That's all.